Hey guys, so this is part three of episode two of the floor support and firewall replacement. Uh, just so you know, I ended up just purchasing a new firewall. I figured the amount of time and effort and money I would have spent trying to fix the old one that uh, I was only $100 shy of, of this. So I didn't want to waste all the argon on it with TIG welding, so I picked up a new one and here it is. It, uh, you know, nice quality piece of metal and it's the exact same thing as the old one, so it should go right in. Uh, all right, so since last time I uh, I spoke to you, I had been working on the uh, the four supports, and they're in. They're exactly where they should be in the car, according to the Ford Service Manual. They are pretty much centered, and I'll get into how I was able to do all that. And uh, I did have a buddy come over; he helped me out. Uh, it was more of a two-man job trying to make sure everything was where it was supposed to be before I. Uh, welded them in place on the transmission cross member. So they look good, uh, they're in there and they're straight. So, all right, so getting the four supports in wasn't too bad. Uh, you know, as I said, I was, I was gonna try and get this number exact as I could and uh, my buddy came over and he held the other end of the tram gauge. We set it to 42 and a half from this point and then we so we set the floor support to that we did that on the the right side and the left and then I checked my diagonal measurement uh, it's 54.27 uh, from here to here and from here to here and uh, the, the they were dead on so to me that means they're square since I know the back's good uh, I saw a little bit of issue getting uh, 29.88 or 29.78 between the two holes I had more of like just just a hair over 30 all said and done. So uh, there's there's some room to play in there. And again, the important measurement here is making sure that they're the height they're supposed to be uh, to the car. So this guy right here. So that's 5.736 inches from the baseline that you set on the Ford Service Manual with your laser level. And then also the distance between the inboard points of both floor supports, which is better illustrated over the chart I made on SolidWorks. So as you can see, here's the floor support coming here and uh, they're roughly 0.08 inches in, in thickness. So doing math, um, you know, I've got 27 and a half subtracting um, 0.08 uh, from each side gives me roughly uh, 27 and three eighths, which is 27.375. So uh, in order to get the floor supports exactly centered uh, up more at the front, because that's where it kind of cradles the, um, the frame rail, we snapped, or excuse me, we shot a laser, a vertical laser level line from underneath the car in this direction. So we shot it from here. Uh, we, what we did is we centered it on the cross member, which we knew the distance between the ends was 27 and 3 8 so we subtracted that, or excuse me, divided that by two. And then we did it again up at, the, at a point on the, um, on the front of the car, uh, a fixed point. And so what I did is I took some blue tape between those two points, marked a line, and then we were able to center the laser level to the car. And then we took 27 and 3 8 and we divided that by two and took the tape measure from the forward part of the floor support and then measured that distance between uh, the laser line that was being shot vertically through here. And we hit our mark and then we flipped it over and did the same thing through here. And then that told us that we had centered the floor supports to the center of the car. And then all said and done, um, and when they're in place, we get 27 and a half inches, uh, which is what you want. Uh, it's roughly 27 and a half to 27 and 5 eighths. Uh, I've seen both and which seems to be acceptable. So that's how we were able to center the front of the, uh, of the four supports. And then, like I said, I got underneath uh, before we welded it and we had set the front to 5.736 and then just, just, a, the, just beyond the back half to uh, 5.736. And that leveled the floor support to the baseline and I could tell you they are sitting much better than they did when I first installed them. So taking the time to do all this measuring and 
and uh, using technology seems to really help. I might be a little overboard, but uh, you know, I just this is where the start of the car is going to be, and uh, working forward, I just want it to be perfect. So, uh, using SolidWorks really helped out and uh, getting things where they needed to be. And uh, I'll take you over the car and show you where I uh, I put the laser level and uh, kind of mock up what I did. I'm not going to go into too much exacting with it just because it's it's kind of a pain and uh, the blue tape has fallen off so it's not going to be as accurate but I'll give you an idea so it's looking good all right so just doing a little math here to show you how I got the the center line of the car and uh, the four supports off center from the car so as I said before uh, each uh, four support is uh, 80 thousandths of an inch thick and then subtracting that from 27 and a half inches um, from each side so you would get uh, 27 and 3 eighths or 0.375 inches. So to find off center, uh, you would take that number divided by two and you end up getting 13 and 11 sixteenths. So each question mark off center is 13 and 11 sixteenths. And then I will show you how I ended up getting that laser line center on the car. I turn it around just so you could see um, or I was able to at least uh, center it as best I could without uh, without any help so you can see what it would look like. All right, so there's my vertical laser level casting its line. And uh, in order to center it, I took my tape and it's rinse and repeat till you get it. And then I put it on the end of the, the transmission cross member and then it's a little hard to do it without two hands. I measured out and got 13, 11, 16 and then I swap it around, do the same thing, and then I get the same measurement. And then to center it, I need two points to center on the car. So I ran a tape from known original metal, which is the inside of the rocker, so the inner rocker, across, and if I remember correctly, I got 54 and a half, so I divided that by two, and got 27 and a quarter. So then I did the same thing. I put the tape from there, and then as you can see, let's try to see, it's 27 and a quarter, and then when I flip it over, I get the same thing. So now I know since it's centered at 27 and a quarter and at 13, 11, 16, I have centered my laser, my vertical line to the car. Now I can take my tape measure and measure off uh, 13 and 11 sixteenths from the four supports to center line. And then that's how I know that the front of them are in the correct position. And they had just so happened because of how I replaced the metal before they end, ended up pretty much where they were before. Uh, just a little bit tighter uh, on this one. Um, and this one uh, is exact same spot as it was before as far as that measurement's concerned. So, and then before I welded them, I got underneath with uh, that scissor jack there on both sides. And then I took my, my plate with my uh, height measurement for the floor supports and I set everything to what it was supposed to be. And then that's when I welded it. And uh, it was actually nice and tight up there. And then I put my, my digital level right there on the cross member and uh, it read, I think if I remember correctly, 0.1. So <laughs> I'm not going to try and get it any better than that. That's pretty good. So that is how I was able to get the front of the, the floor supports where they needed to be. Uh, again, not so much as worried about as the back of the floor supports um, as I am the front. Um, and then because uh, they do help line everything up in the front here. Uh, and there's a little bit of wiggle room when you put the frame rails in, uh, but again, those should be nice and square when I put them in to each other moving forward. Um, and then the, I think the back's just off by uh, ever so slightly, so it shouldn't affect it too much. Okay, next is going to be the firewall. All right, so uh, my next step in this process, um, actually I'm going to be changing some, uh, some things up. So, you know, when you're, when you're building these cars from all the research I've done and uh, watching another guy's YouTube channel, the Joe Daddy's Garage, if you haven't been over there, you absolutely should. He is a wealth of information. Um, 
He talks about sequencing, and I think he makes a really good point. You know, when you put these together, uh, you got to plan way ahead to make sure you don't have to go back and redo work, um, which again is something I didn't do before, and I'm definitely doing now. I actually have a Word document of my build order. Um, but, you know, as things go along, it's a dynamic thing, so I'm, I'm going to be doing it just a little bit different than I had planned uh, because I want to do that upgrade of putting the, the two-inch tubing inside here. But if I install the firewall, it's going to be hard to do. I'll have to snake it in from inside the floor support in there, and I just think it'll be easier and better if I wait. So... I'm still going to work on getting the firewall in, but I'm not going to actually weld it. Um, what I'm going to do is clamp it, and then I'm going to disconnect the frame rails, and then get those where they need to be. Um, and then with the firewall clamped in place, it should help me line up where these need to go, and then weld those you know, down to the jig uh, in place. And then uh, while I'm doing that, I'll hang the fenders and make sure my door gap's correct. And once all that's good and done, um, then I'll weld the frame rails and the four supports together. And then uh, that'll allow me to cut out the floor, or before I do that, depending on, I gotta think a little more about how I'm gonna sequence this, install the subframe connectors to the rear frame rails, but I can't do that until after I replace the rear frame rails. So I have one right now, I'm waiting for the other one to get here, it should be here in June. So I'm just gonna change it up a little bit, how I'm gonna do this, so this, this part three is going to be expanded out a little bit uh, and, and I'm going to clean up, show you what I'm going to do to get the new firewall in uh, using the export brace uh, and all the bolts and everything with that uh, and then the start of the disconnect of the front frame rails. So a lot of work I got to do before I can actually do the fastback conversion but it's going to make the conversion much easier because the new panels, the new uh, uh, side structures have the toe kicks uh, in place. So I want to get that firewall lined up correctly so when I install it, this lip meets this lip in the correct spots. And that'll just aid in the install of the actual uh, side structure. Uh, and where I also plan, there's a, there's a roof brace that goes across here. I'm gonna weld some, some braces in to keep that in place. And then that'll help me line up the top, get the front where it needs to be, and in the back, um, I'm going to use the four pan uh, where the wheelhouse is welded to as uh, the lineup for that. Plus, where I have my jig supporting the rocker. So that's my plan. Uh, I'm going to get to it and get started on cleaning up all these welds, uh, and then I'm going to slip in the new firewall, and I'll show that to you next. Okay, so the firewall, the new one's uh, set in there, and I've got the export brace uh, tightened down, um, and I'm running to an issue. So you should be able to see my holes are slightly off. So I did some, some measuring um, from this side of the car, or I've got something to point at it. So from here, I measured to the same spot on the other side and got 54 and a half. So I divided that by two and got uh, 27 and a quarter. And then I did the same thing um, from, let's see here, from pulling, attached it here and ran it across all the way to the other side and got 53 and three eighths. Uh, and the so center of that is 26 and 11 sixteenths. So that was so I could line up the center of the car at two points for my vertical laser line to hit. So I hit both those points and then I laid the tape measure across the top of the firewall from, from there pulling it to right here. And I got uh, 54 and 7 eighths, so half of that was 27 and 7 sixteenths. All right, so as you can see, the laser line is the center of the car, and I need to move it towards the driver's side. Uh, it's pretty tight in there right now, so I got to figure out how I'm going to be able to do that. And then that little bit should fix that issue. So hopefully that centers it. 
Uh, it definitely looks off center. It's tighter over down at the bottom there uh, along the the inner rocker uh, than it is on this side. So hopefully moving it over just a hair um, should help quite a bit. And you know, it's not like it's dire. Um, I just want to make sure that that you know certain things line up where they're supposed to, like the steering column when it goes through and whatnot. So I'm going to move that over and see about getting that centered. All right, so I was able to get really close centering. It's just just shy of the line. Uh, it definitely looks a lot better uh, sitting in here. Uh, so the reason why I was having an issue is because the toe kicks were, were this one was pressing in this way. So I had a hard time pulling it this way. So I, I yanked on this a bit and then I used a drift and I stuck it down in the hole and then I, I did my, my move and it shifted the whole thing over. Now one other thing I wanted to talk about is, so the export brace, in order to get in the right position, there's just three total t and two other pieces of metal that sit on top of this. So you have the upper and lower cowling that sit on here. So I measured them and I got their roughly 40 thou. So I took uh, a washer, took four of these and put them underneath each one of the, the holes because this totaled around roughly 80 thousands. So just to get this in the correct spot, so I, I slid those underneath and then ran the bolts down through. So it's a little loose, but the rest of those are tight, so it's okay. So that's just something to consider because um, you know it could shift it a hair and not put it in the right spot. So um, if I were to be welding this in, uh, knowing that this was where it's supposed to be as far as height, I would be, but I'm going to have to hold off until I figure out the height issue for the frame rails. So another thing is, let me grab a light. So as you can see, there is a gap there. Gets a little bit tighter down at the bottom, wider at the top. Again, just another indication that the front frame rails are sitting a little low as you go out to the front. So no big deal, I'll be able to correct all that. So I'm just gonna get this thing exactly where I want it and then clamp it to these guys and then start working my way forward. I'm gonna have to remove the export brace. Um, actually, maybe not. Maybe I will leave that where it's at so it can all pivot together. So here you go. Um, gonna get started on the front frame for else now. So that's it for this episode or part and uh, looking forward to the front frame rail uh, re uh, removal and installation.